Hey nerds, Todd Simmons coming back at you with a little more Toddomation. Um, this video is the second video in this Meraki series focusing on uh, firewall rules or ACLs. Um, this one specifically is switch ACLs for your network. Uh, this is a uh, largely requested video. I uh, want to thank uh, BJ out there. Uh, he's the one that uh, was the last one that requested it uh, after watching a couple of the videos. So, you know, really appreciate the poor support from the community. Uh, so let's jump right in. Uh, we're going to create ACLs inside the Meraki dashboard using Python uh, in Excel in order to store it. Uh, if you're in this video thinking it's the firewall rules, it's not. That's the other video. I'll post a link uh, inside this video, but you can just go into my playlist uh, and find that video pretty simple. So we're logged into my Meraki dashboard, as you can see. Uh, let's just go ahead and jump in a network. I'm going to be working on East Network 1 in this video. This is the same network uh, I did the firewall rules, uh, both incoming uh, and outgoing. Uh, so we want to look at switching. Well, let's go into switching, and we'll go into ACLs. As you can see right now, uh, the user-defined rules, there's nothing in here except for the default, uh, which is allow any any uh, for the uh, ACL. Uh, by the way, if you're not familiar with the term ACL, uh, it's just short for access control list. Uh, a lot of us that have been in the industry for a while, uh, we like acronyms or we like shortening things. Uh, and ACL is certainly easier to say than access control list. Uh, but that's what we're working with is access control list. Uh, so as you can see in my Meraki dashboard, I have no ACLs. What you can see, though, uh, is how it's expected to show up. And these are the different areas or the different items that you can specify uh, inside your ACL. So let's look at my Excel spreadsheet. If you are not familiar or, or don't know how to get this information out of Excel, one, I'm going to do it for you. Uh, but if you want to get a deep dive, uh, I do have another video uh, much longer than this one, showing you all of the aspects of how to use Excel and Python with the Meraki dashboard for creating, you know, different uh, networks and such of things. It's more of a, a overview, but this is very specific to just ACLs. So uh, as we look at this, uh, I have my Excel spreadsheet. Okay, and the Excel spreadsheet, very importantly, is named based on the network ID. Uh, that you get out of the Meraki dashboard. Um, if you have 5, 10, 15, 20 networks, uh, it can be hard to keep all of this together. There's a couple of ways to do it. The way that I'm choosing to show you today is a spreadsheet for each network. Uh, you could have done a different tab for each network. The problem is, is the way that Meraki puts things together, uh, it's really based on that network. So I have decided to show you how to do this, but I'm creating a different type of um, ACL or subject for each of the tabs down here, whether it be on your firewall, whether it be on your switch. And as you can see, I've got a wireless one down here. Uh, that's coming in the next video. So for the switch uh, ACL, a couple of things. This is my header. And as you can see, um, it starts with policy and it ends at comment. This is very important because this ends up being the keys for the dictionary that gets created. Uh, and then the, the Meraki um, Python method will then take that and put that into a JSON in order to upload it. One thing that I found out is there must have been different developers doing the different API calls. Because uh, I thought, I just figured, you know, ACLs are ACLs. Uh, and it would all be the same as far as the keys that were used or the headers that were used. It is not. So if you're used to doing this and the firewall is rules or the, you know, the wireless SSIDs is rules and, and you think it's the same, it is not. I don't know why, but the destination cider and the destination port that I've got highlighted right here, in other API calls, it's actually D-E-S-T instead of D-S-T. Uh, so like I said, it must have been two different programmers that were writing that API. Uh, so looking at it, uh, the switch one's pretty simple. Uh, we can do, uh, as far as policy goes, we have two options. We have deny or allow, and you'll notice there's a down arrow. So I'm using validation 
in order to make sure that this works for you. Uh, the IP version can be either IPv4 or v6, or it can be any, so it's a dual set rule. Uh, the protocol, once again, is also validated. It can be any TCP or UDP. Those are your only options on the switch. Uh, on other, um, on the firewalls, it's different. Uh, then the CIDR, this is not validated. I expect that you would put this in there correctly. Um, but it does have to have the slash. Okay, even if it's a single IP, just make it a slash 32. That would identify that it's just a single IP. Uh, source port um, is any port from 1 to 65,000 something. I've actually specified that in here for you. So it can be any or any of those values. Once again, destination cider. It can be an actual IP. It could be a range of IPs uh, using the slash. Uh, or it can just be any um, destination port, same as the source port, can be from 1 to 65,000 and something. Uh, if you're going to specify this uh, as a VLAN, uh, you, would, you, would you would say what VLAN it was going to be assigned to, uh, and then just your comment for each of these. Um, if you'll create these rules and just keep them here, you can edit the rules here and then just re-upload the rules into your Meraki dashboard. Now, one thing I want to say, it's an all or nothing deal with these Meraki ACLs. So if you make a change here, you upload the entire rule set to the Meraki dashboard, you don't actually just add something in or take something out via the API. If you need to do that, you would want to actually go to the Meraki dashboard. Uh, but I find it much easier just to maintain my ACL here in this Excel spreadsheet, and then I can upload it uh, any way that I want. So let's go over to the code. So the first thing that we're going to look in is this update switch ACL. So this is the code that's actually going to run uh, and do all of this for you. I have decided to use uh, the uh, Python decouple method, which allows me to create a .env file. And in that .env file, it allows me to keep certain things secure, such as my API key, my org ID. Uh, there is a vid another video on how to use or how to hide your, your variables um, using a .env file if you're interested in that video. Uh, you'll see the one thing that I am specifying is that network ID, and you'll notice that this network ID is exactly the same as my uh, Excel spreadsheet name, which is very, very important. If you don't want to use the, um, uh, the .env file, you could do the same thing here just by uncommenting these two uh, and deleting or commenting these out. But you will need this network ID in order to continue. Uh, so if you've watched any of these videos, hopefully you have, you know that this dashboard uh, is just uh, creating an alias for this particular method, which is going to connect us to the Meraki dashboard. Uh, that's necessary to make a call for a particular API. Uh, next thing is this. Uh, I'm creating something called a variable called switch ACLs, uh, and it's going to do this get rules command um, from another Python file that I'm fixing to show you, and then I'm going to send the network ID over there with that. So notice that I have this import Meraki switch ACLs as ACL. That's where this ACL command comes right here, is it's it, it knows to go to that particular Meraki Python file that I created uh, in order to run the code. So let's take a look at that one. So when I look at that, that's this Meraki switch ACLs.py. I've shortened this. This file is actually much longer in its entirety. But for this video, uh, I only put the pieces in here that are necessary. Uh, notice that I'm creating this Excel doc variable when it comes in using the network ID that we're sending over and then adding .xlsx onto it. That's how it's going to open that uh, file that we you see on the screen now. A okay. couple of things. If you want to do a deep dive in this, like I said, go ahead and watch that other video, much longer video. Okay. Uh, the only thing that I'm doing here is I'm creating a new list for switch, and then I'm going to add the um, dictionary items to that list. So it becomes a list of dictionaries. So we have all of our dictionaries listed in um, a single list. So it's looking for this switch ACL tab, which as you can see down here, this is the switch ACL tab. You can use whatever name you want. If you change the name, unfortunately, you are going to have to change that here. Okay. Uh, and what it's going to do is it's going to go in here and it's going to look at each of the rows. Uh, it's going to start on row two. Now, Excel, or at least this particular version, this is actually um, a Python method for Excel, 
Row two is actually row two. It does not start at zero like a lot of other things. And then the max row just determines, you know, how many entries that you have. It's going to create a value for each one of the rows that you have. And that value is going to be paired with the header. And that's how we get a key value pair out of this Excel document. It's then going to uh, switch dot append those particular values. Remember, values is, is a dictionary with just the these items. So each one of these is going to be a dictionary for each one of these lines with the primary, with not the primary key, the actual key is going to be here in each of those dictionaries. All right. It's then going to return that list, which is important because the Meraki dashboard, when we're sending this API up, it, expend, it expects it to be a list of dictionaries. Uh, so that's the file that we're using to grab the Excel data. Let's go back to the actual Python file that's going to run. So once we have the switch ACLs right here, what I want to do now is just kind of show you real fast that we can see what data is coming through. So if I do an IC, uh, IC is short for ice cream. Uh, I love ice cream, uh, but I also love the, uh, um, the methods that ice cream has. I think it prints to the screen much better than say pprint or just a standard print does. Uh, so I'm going to raise this just so we can see it a little bit better. Uh, and then, oh, you know what? I want to make sure we don't continue to run. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick exit here just to ensure that I'm not going to go anywhere past that. And I click the play button to go, and here it goes. Here is the output. As you can see, it got it really fast. Uh, and this is the list, as you can see here. Uh, and the name of the list is Switch ACLs. And you can see each of the dictionaries has been uh, provided inside this list, and it it shows you each of the entries that it's going to pass along. Okay, so uh, we've got one, and there's a dictionary for each line. So we've got, uh, as you can see, seven dictionaries inside here, uh, which correlates to the seven lines uh, that I have for my ACL. So let's go ahead and just drop this back down. Let's clear this out so we can see it better. Let's remove this exit. Uh, in this ice cream statement. And lastly, we're going to do a response equals. You don't need response equals. I keep it in there uh, just in case I get something funny. I get a bad response and I want to print that response out to the screen. Uh, if everything goes, your response is just going to be pretty simple. It's going to be a 200 uh, unless you want to look at the test, uh, the text. So this dashboard dot, right, then tells me I'm going to pull this dashboard. So that's what's going to make the, the API connection for me. And then I'm going to use the switch option and it's update network switch access control list. And then I'm going to send my network ID for what it is that I want to update. And then this switch ACLs is the actual list of dictionaries that it's going to send over. So at this point, we're ready to run. Uh, so let's go ahead and play it. And there was my response. Wouldn't that take a second, maybe two seconds? I didn't get any errors back on the screen, which means that my code was correct. And more importantly, my key value pairs were correct. So if I come back over here, as you can see right now, there's, there's no ACLs in here. But if I hit refresh, there it is. My ACL completely loaded exactly the way that I expected it to. Uh, so I can make any changes either here or I can just go back. So let's make a quick change. Uh, so I'm going to come back. I'm going to delete this middle line right here just by uh, saying delete. And there it's gone. I'm going to save my change. Uh, so as you can see, this line, which line was it, has now been deleted. So it was the, it was the fourth line, fifth line. So one, two, three, four. So this is gone at this particular point. Well, let's check it. Let's go back. Let's run it again. All I did was made a single change. Didn't make any changes to my code. I'm going to make it run again. There it goes. Okay, so it already ran. And if I do a refresh, that line should be gone. And it is. So that's how easy it is to use the Tautomation code, uh, Python, Excel, and the Meraki dashboard uh, in order to maintain your ACLs Additionally, be able to update it on the Meraki dashboard with a single click. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to hear it in the comments. Uh, definitely, please like, subscribe. I really appreciate all the support from everybody. And uh, until next time, we'll talk to you all later, nerds.